Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my August favorites and fails of the month. And let me tell you, this month, the fails, one of them in particular, absolutely the worst product I have tried in 2020 and in a very long time. So if you want to hear what I've been loving and not loving in the last month, let's go ahead and hop into it. I usually save the fails for the end of the video, but this just cannot wait. I have to talk about this. You guys, the Ardell Brow Tint. So I first shared this in a drugstore haul and in that video I had so many requests to get back with you guys and let you know my thoughts on it. So many of you guys were interested in this. So I mentioned it in my August favorites and fails and told you guys that I had only used it once at that time but still wanted to update you. And in that video I still put it in the fails category because I noticed that the product faded within like two days even though it claims to last for two weeks. But I told you guys I was going to keep testing it out and many of you recommended that I try leaving it on for longer. And I thought, you know what, that might be the difference. That might save it. Maybe I'm just not leaving it on long enough. So I've tried it two more times since. The second time that I tried it, it's funny, I don't know why I didn't put two and two together. But the second time I tried it, in the following days, I noticed I had breakouts all underneath my eyebrows. I had well, what I thought at the time were breakouts. And I'm like, that is so strange that I'm breaking out underneath my eyebrows and nowhere else on my face. And I don't know why I didn't put two and two together with this product. I think it's because the first time I used it, I didn't really notice anything like that. So... Flash forward to a few days ago, I'm filming this on Tuesday, you're going to see it on Wednesday, and I dyed my brows again on Friday. Keep in mind, all the dye is totally faded by now. Anything you see in my brows, that's a brow pencil. So I tried this on Friday, and I left it on a little bit longer than recommended, just like I had the previous time. Ardell recommends leaving it on for 10 minutes, and I went ahead and left it on for 25 which, you know, I take full responsibility for. That wasn't the recommended, those weren't the instructions. But you guys, I have been experiencing the worst reaction to this product. Oh my gosh, I'm, I'm pretty confident that you can see on camera that my eyes look, my eyebrows look a little bit red, but just know that I have been in extreme pain and uncomfort for the last five days since using this product. I noticed a couple hours after taking the dye off, my eyebrows were feeling super itchy and I'm like, okay, that's kind of weird. You know, who knows? And I just, I feel like I kept itching them and I was trying not to, I didn't want to irritate anything. But then I looked in a mirror and I'm like, wait a second, they look very red. And then in the coming days, they started swelling. Like you guys, when I would turn my face to the side, you could see how far my eyebrow was protruding out of my face because it was that swollen. They were completely red all the way around the eyebrows and just itchy 24 seven. I was in pain, I was uncomfortable. Oh my gosh, you guys, like if you are curious about this product, please take this as a warning. I, even today, like they're not totally better. It's been five days. And then I'm kind of thinking to myself, okay, can you really blame the product, Kelly? You didn't follow the instructions. You left it on longer than they recommended to do. So I was kind of like, you know what? Maybe this was me, but I decided to look up some other reviews. Now, it's a newer product. There really aren't a lot of reviews out there, but between Amazon, Target, and Ardell's website, I did find a few, and I found at least four other people that have had the same experience as me, some of them worse. By the way, I'm gonna pop a photo of my eyebrows on that I took a couple days ago. I feel like this photo does not even do it justice, you guys. I legitimately looked like Frankenstein, you know, when his eyebrows are so far, like, sticking out of his head. Like, that's how swollen they were. But I was able to find someone else, and I'm gonna put her photo on the screen. I want to say this was a review on Target's website. She said she had first-degree chemical burns. I found another review where the person said her eyes were fully swollen shut because her eyebrows were that swollen. So there were some people, there were definitely reviews where people didn't have any problems with this but please be aware of that I do not recommend this at all like avoid it at all cost my eyebrows are still red and itchy and there's no end in sight okay now that we got that public service announcement out of the way let's hop into some favorites I'll save the final fail for the end of the video it is not anywhere near as dramatic of a fail as that Ardell brow kit by the way you see it in the bag because I uh, got rid of the box but this little bag it comes in I wanted to love this, you guys know I did, but wow. So, the first favorite is a bit random. You know, we mostly focus on makeup and beauty products here. 
this is a soap, but I'm so excited about it. I have to talk about it on my channel. So this is a product Jen Loves Reviews made me buy. She mentioned it in her monthly favorites video last month. The brand is called Jello and it's such a cool concept. So you buy a little container and then it comes with these pods. They basically look like dishwasher pods and you fill the container up to the line with water and then you put two of the pods in and you shake it and then they fully dissolve and then you have foaming hand soap. And it's nice because it minimizes the plastic waste of always buying like new hand soaps. And of course, yeah, the alternative is to have a reusable one, which is what I had before, but I still just think this concept is really cool. And you can buy the pods in bulk and just refill it. And it's actually really affordable. I paid $7 for like the bottle plus the refillable pads and in total it's pads i said pads i mean pods in total it was seven dollars plus shipping it was like 10 or 11. i think for four hand soaps that's pretty good they're also leaping bunny certified cruelty free and it's kind of tricky to find cruelty free hand soap that's not super expensive so I wanted to shout it out. I thought it was cool. All right, this next product is new to me, but it is not new to the market. This is a very old, like OG, holy grail for many people makeup product. And that's the Mineral Veil from Bare Minerals. So this was in the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale this year. And I mentioned it in my video and I was curious about picking it up. And so many of you guys recommended that I do. And I'm so glad that I did. So it's essentially a finishing powder. It is translucent. However, I do want to note, I bought the version that has SPF in it. I bought the SPF 25 version just because... I always love a little extra sun protection. I, I like it for touching up also. However, I was reading the reviews on Ulta and many people that purchased the SPF 25 that had deeper skin tones. I did want to mention that if you do have a deeper skin tone, you'll probably prefer the original one, which is truly translucent, even though this one claims to be. So it comes in the same packaging as their famous foundation, which you guys know I also love. And the texture of this is just so smooth and finely milled that it's not going to look very heavy on the skin at all, but it's so blurring on the skin. So I I love using this as a finishing powder when I've already done my makeup, just taking a little bit of this, dusting it over everything, and instantly everything is blurred out. It's nice because sometimes I can struggle with some patchy blush or bronzer, just maybe things looking a little bit more bold than I'm going for. And when I take this and just dust it over everything, it's like, an, it's like a filter on your skin. Like everything just gets smoothed out. So I had my eye on this for a while. I'm really glad that I finally picked it up. I definitely think that it's worth the hype. It's a beautiful finishing powder and I highly recommend it. It just makes everything smoothed out. Another favorite that I picked up in the 21 Days of Beauty sale is this foundation. And I don't want to spend too, too long on it because I feel like I've been talking about this in a lot of my videos recently, but it is very good. This is the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. So the shade that I picked up is a kind of, it's kind of a bad shade match for me, but the shade I wanted was sold out. So I have Fair Lady T2W, but if you are around my skin tone, you might prefer T2N. But I will say, whenever I first apply this, it looks straight up orange, but I don't know what it is. Once I blend it out, I feel like it kind of matches my skin tone a bit better and doesn't really look too, too warm once I'm done with my makeup. So I did want to note that. This is a very unique foundation formula, completely different than almost anything in my collection. This is water thin. I read that in the reviews. I heard so many people saying, you know, it's very thin, but I don't even think I was prepared till I pumped this out and I was like, oh, they were not kidding. This is like water but it surprisingly packs a punch i was expecting to get like skin tint level coverage just based on the consistency but it has a nice level of pigmentation and what's nice is that you can build it up to a very like what am i trying to say you can customize it you can do a couple layers of it and it's not going to look cakey because it's really thin Whereas when you have a really thick foundation, if you do more than one layer, it's going to be so noticeable on the skin. But this is kind of just like that second skin finish where you can keep building it up and you're not really going to know. The finish is like the perfect satin finish. Here I was, I was like, I'm not going to talk about it for very long. And I just can't shut up about this. I really like it. But I do want to note, I feel like this is a bit polarizing. I've heard from some of you guys who said you did not have a good experience with this. And then I've heard from some of you guys who say it's your holy grail also. Well, 
I'm not going to say it's my holy grail. That's a bold statement, but it's becoming one of my favorites in my collection. You know, my favorite is what I'm wearing today, Urban Decay Stay Naked. But this is giving it a run for its money. This is great for that like natural finish. I'm almost, you almost might not think I'm wearing foundation look. I also have a palette favorite this month. I actually debated putting this in my August favorites also, but I felt like it was too soon. I was like, no girl, test it out some more. Don't just put it in your favorites right away. But after continuing to test it out, I can confirm this is definitely a favorite. This is from Sigma and it is their Untamed palette. So I have a three looks one palette with this. I will link it down below if you want some inspiration with this. But this, is this not like, fall perfection. I just feel like there's so many fun fall looks that you can do with this, but at the same time, I don't think it's too intimidating. It's not too grungy. It's not too bold. It's a, they're colorful shades, but they have they're much more muted. I've done purple looks with this, blue looks, green looks, red looks, like neutral looks. Like you could go any direction. There's a lot of versatility in here. You guys know I love the Sigma formula and I've just been having so much fun with this palette. All right, one more non-makeup product, but it's makeup related. These are the bags from Allie Glein's company, you guys. I was so excited. Allie reached out to me and asked if she could send me a few of her bags, and this one I am loving. So this is the smaller option, and then you open it up and you have two bags inside, and these two are a bit smaller. Now, obviously I'm not doing any real traveling right now. However, both of my parents had birthdays in the month of September, so I did go to visit them and stay at their house a few times, and I took this both times. And I don't know how she did this. This doesn't really look that big, like maybe it does on camera, but in my bag, it's not that big, especially these little bags but they fit everything. It's like Mary Poppins bag in there. Like I just kept putting more things in here and I'm like, how does everything fit into this small container? So I would do makeup in this bag and then skincare in this bag. And then along the side, I would put like some brushes or anything like longer that didn't quite fit in either of these bags. And I just feel like she did such a fantastic job with this. It feels so luxe and I just adore Allie. So I definitely wanted to shout these out. It's been a huge favorite of mine this month. Before we get into the final fail, I have a Technique favorite of the month. So I mentioned this in my Shop My Stash video on Monday, what I've been doing and you guys, you have to try this. So. I haven't been as into highlighter recently. I know, who am I, what is happening? I'm wearing it today, I love wearing it on camera, but sometimes for day to day, I just feel like I want something that is a little bit less noticeable. So what I've been doing is taking a sponge and then a super glowy setting spray. So this is the Pixi Glow Mist. The glowier the better for this trick. And then I spray it onto my sponge and then I tap that on the high points of my cheeks where I want a highlighted effect, but I don't want to apply highlighter. So you can do it here, maybe on your nose, a little on the forehead anywhere that you want a glow and it just looks like a natural dew. It's kind of like the look that highlighter is trying to emulate but you don't have any highlighter on. And it's also nice because this product for me and some like really glowy setting sprays, sometimes they can just look a little bit too glowy, especially on like the center of my forehead or just the center of my face. Sometimes I don't want to be that shiny everywhere but I want it on like the high points. So Try that, highly recommend it. All right, now my final fail for the month, this is from e.l.f. This is their Keep Your Curl Mascara. So I picked this up based on a lot of recommendations. And for me, uh, you guys heard me mention this in my review roundup recently that the performance is all right. I get some nice length, not a lot of volume, but I do think it does a really great job gripping onto every lash and defining them. So for an everyday mascara, it's beautiful. However, I am the kind of person that likes to go a little over the top with my mascara. I'm expecting a lot. And this for me is just kind of like a natural everyday type of look, which isn't always a bad thing. But the reason it's in the fail category is because it is the hardest mascara to remove out of any mascara I have ever tried. So it's a tubing formula, so it's not really going to uh, disintegrate with an oil like most mascaras will. It kind of just comes off in clumps. And not all tubing mascaras are difficult to remove, but this one is. I will say though, Sarah Rose, she was the person I picked it up on based on her recommendation. She loves it and she 
said that she likes to remove it with a makeup removing like cloth, like a microfiber cloth, kind of like the makeup eraser or the face halo. So I tried it with that and I do think it removes quite a bit easier with one of those. Once I've kind of started to take it off and especially when they're, my eyelashes are pretty wet, I just gently kind of pull down with that. But still, I lose way more eyelashes in the removal process of this than any other mascara I've ever tried. And when I mentioned it in my favorites, no, in my speed reviews, many of you guys said you experienced the same thing. So if that is a turn off to you like it is to me, definitely avoid this. All right, those were my favorites and fails for September. Let me know what you guys have been loving. I included some random lifestyle things in here like the bag, like the soap. So if you guys have lifestyle things you've been loving as well, let us know down below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will go ahead and see you in my next one. Bye.